Yes, change the slide, please. All right, so in 2014, we had the proof of concept. Um, we piloted it in um, 2014 to establish the center within the grad college. That means we only provide support to grad students, right? Um, we started in 2015 um, with three programs, academic communication program, grad peer mentor program, and then the international teaching assistance program. And then we expanded that to thesis and dissertation writing in 2019. So next slide. Today, the TDWP is one of seven programs that we run and we're continuously developing new programs. And you can see we have a range of um, programs that support both written and communication. And we differentiate ourselves from the Writing Media Center on campus because they take a different approach to the writing um, philosophy, right? So in, the, in, in our center, we work with them talking about academic moves in writing. So the research that we've done in our center, we analyze how different uh, scholarly materials in different disciplines go by moves. And there is a pattern of moves. For example, in the introduction, there are four moves or whatever. And then you go through the next section, which is the lit review or the discussion or the conclusion. So that is the crust of the writing program. And we've extended that into the thesis and dissertation writing as well. Um, next slide. And so here are the goals of the thesis and dissertation writing program. We provide writing support. So before they even reach us for the formatting, right? We want to support them while they are writing so that they produce good quality materials. Um, through that, we have individual consultations with 60 minutes one-on-one -on -one with our trained consultants. They work through different aspects of the writing project itself. Um, and we focus on all aspects of writing. Then we come to the part where they actually do have to sit down and write. That's not easy, right? So we provide, uh, we facilitate accountability through uh, retreats. And it's usually about a four hour block. Students can come and go. We, we, we put a space so that our consultants can be there. We have expanded that to virtual as well. But the idea is that our cons trained consultants are on hand. And as they're drafting and writing, and then they get a bump. It's like, oh, can I ask you something? and the consultant is right there to give feedback. And they, they have a conversation about like, what is your goal? What are you trying to say? How about doing it this way? Have you considered that? They don't add it. They don't write for the students. They walk through the concept with the students and the students decide what they want to say. Um, and then finally, they reach to the phase where ETDA has been talking about the formatting part. And through this, we have uh, 30 minute format checks with one-on-one -on -one, uh, with our consultant, and then 90 minute boot camps where we train, um, we walk through all the guidelines, troubleshoot with them. We have both Word and LaPat Overleaf. So we have split that now that we have the consultant trained for Overleaf and LaPat. Um, and then we also started walk-in uh, clinics because the, the 30 minute appoint, uh, are made in advance by appointments. The appointments fill up so fast, and the students say, I can't get an appointment. So finally, we decided, all right, we're going to have a set-aside time. You check the calendar. If there's open time, they can come in. They can take a ticket. They can wait, just like going to a clinic, right? So we call that the walking clinics. And then obviously, we've developed a various uh, number of the various number of tools, like templates, uh, videos, and so forth. So we go to the next slide, uh, slide number five, and I'm going to have Kristen take over at, at this point. So I'm going to mute this mic. Okay, everyone can hear me in the conference? Great. All right, so um, this is a broad overview of historically participation we've gotten from students in the writing program. Um, so this graph shows from spring 2019 all the way 
to summer 2022. Um, and the red bars are the 60 minute writing consult consultation sessions. The yellow bars are the 30 minute format checks. And then in fall 2021, we introduced a LaTeX format check. And so we've actually got those tracking too now here. Um, the LaTeX numbers are much lower than we've actually been offering support. So our LaTeX consultant does a lot of her consulting by email and she doesn't even have a 30 minute consultation with the student. They just communicate um, by email. And then you can also see that um, in spring 2021, what you can't see it is that here is where we started doing walk-in clinics. Um, and we don't really have a good way of tracking that right now. So from spring 2021 onward, what is not shown is a lot of students that are being served via the walk-in clinic. Um, so the numbers will actually be a little bit higher um, starting spring 2021. Um, but generally you can see that there is growth on the trend. Um, so people are finding out about it and taking advantage of it, especially the format checks. Um, and then on this slide, we have the number of students that we've actually served, um, and that is growing too, um, except for obviously this period here, spring 2020 to summer 2021, we have online support only. So you see a bit of a dip uh, during the lockdown and then a big pickup once campus returns. This is um, an illustration of our uh, organizational layout. Um, so the Center for Communication Excellence, the writing program that we are a part of, um, has a program coordinator, uh, that's Lily, writing consultants, those are the graduate assistants, and then reviewers, which I'm one of the reviewers. Um, and so we all collaborate together to get the dissertations written, formatted, and published in ProQuest. And then at the higher level, the graduate services and the faculty services um, interact to deal with other kinds of graduation requirements, exam results, paperwork, making sure that the student details are all in order before they pass um, everything to the reviewer. Um, so that when that dissertation or thesis is approved for format, it's ready to go. Um, and then they also monitor extended embargoes. Um, we do have some other stakeholders and collaborators that we work with, ProQuest, obviously, the university library. We work with the Office of Legal Counsel to talk about things like copyright. Um, and then the property, the Office of Intellectual Property and Technology Transfer at our university is also somebody that we've kind of worked alongside to help students with their embargoes. Um, this is a flow chart um, that we actually do offer to students that really illustrates the inner workings. So the red boxes here outline the part that this graduate student actually is involved in. So they are working with the Center for Communication Excellence, doing their informational seminars, boot camps, downloading the template and getting format checks. But then they can actually see using this flow chart, what happens to their file after they upload it to ProQuest. And so they can, using this flow chart, kind of get a better understanding of all the things that are going on while they're waiting the three or four days to find out if they, if they got approved. Um, and I think this really helps them to understand, you know, this is all of the stuff that needs to happen and what you are, who you are communicating with when you get that format, form email from ProQuest. And then it also gives them a sense of, you know, how they can control their information with embargoes, no embargo, ProQuest only embargo, the special embargo for MFAs that has an extended length, and then um, the graduate college hold um, where, you know, not even the abstract and title go up on ProQuest. So this is just a, an explanation, a visual explanation of how that process works. And then we have the training, the consultant training model. Um, so we do train um, all of the graduate assistants um, kind of extensively. So we are doing writing consulting 
as well as format consulting. It's a lot to learn um, because there's all the for the um, the um, writing aspect of writing a dissertation, plus all of the rules of format that the graduate student consultants learn. And so they have this, you know, somewhat lengthy self paced training that ends with multiple observations, both them observing a, a, a working consultant and then a working consultant observing them in sort of a, a trainee session that ends with a certification. Um, and so we do have currently three graduate assistants certified. Um, this is just an example of what that training looks like. So they kind of have to go through um, a Canvas course and do a lot of reading and learning about all the all the materials that are available. And then, like I said, they observe multiple sessions of a working consultant and then a working consultant observes them um, for multiple co-consultations. Co um, and then there's an assessment with written feedback. Um, and so there's actually, you know, quite a lot of uh, evaluation that goes on to get the consultants up and working. And then here's some of the training materials. So this part here, you can see this is the Canvas course where all the materials are. There are quizzes involved, um, a learning check where they actually have to find the errors in a formatted dissertation. Um, and those, of course, get evaluated. Um, and so they they really do go through the process in a in a sort of safe area before they're dealing with an actual student. Um, so the program is funded by the dissertation fee that students have to submit when they apply for graduation. It does cover the stipend for the graduate assistant consultants, um, as well as part of the salaries for the program coordinator and the thesis dissertation reviewers. Um, we uh, the CCE that is sort of recruits and trains um, graduate assistants, uh, they hire them, they supervise them. Um, we monitor issues and concerns and it's really a very tight knit, you know, just like a just like a traditional writing center. It's very tight knit. We see each other in the office um, and we also kind of keep our eye on what is going on with the consultants um, and then, you know, we maintain the guidelines for the format and provide ongoing professional development for consultants as, as those things evolve. Um, we do have to collaborate and communicate frequently with other departments, especially the library, um, the Office of Intellectual Property and Technology and so forth. Um, and then we also collaborate intensively with the graduate college staff who are taking care of, like I said, those other graduation requirements. Okay, so that is the end of the presentation. I'm not sure if we do have time for Q&A at this point, um, but I, I guess our um, facilitator can take care of that. Thank you all for coming to the presentation and bearing with us with the technology. Um, can you hear me? I, think the mic's on. I, can, I can hear. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, um, we are actually out of time. So um, this was actually really interesting. <laughs> well, if, if folks want to, yeah, I was going to say, I think you could ask. Yeah, questions. I mean, if, if you have questions, if you want to stay during the five to ten minute break, you can. You're welcome to ask. And if anybody has any questions online, I have somebody checking the chat, so ask questions there. I'd be happy to answer any questions here, and then maybe Kristen can handle the questions that are online. So, yes. Lily, I actually can't see the chat online at all, so someone would have to read those will, out loud. I will take a question from the room here. So, Okay, so the difference, uh, the, the question is how often do we offer, uh, offer the walk-in clinics? Uh, it used to be when we didn't have enough staff and we only had the three consultants and they were fully booked on the appointment system. Um, I started pulling additional 
uh, consultants who are interdisciplinary writing consultants, but trained with thesis, dissertation, I pull all hands on deck and say, all right, close your hours in the writing, disciplinary writing, interdisciplinary writing. If you have experience with thesis and dissertation, you're going to help me the last two weeks. And then the deadline of the review um, up in, in ProQuest and the week after. So we started making those walk-in clinics um, available during the one period before and one period after the, the upload deadline. Because that's when the students um, work furiously to get to meet the deadline. And then when Kristen reviews it and sends the file back, they said, whoa, I've got a lot of things to deal with. I don't know how to troubleshoot this. I don't understand what they're asking for. And they can't get an appointment. So that's when we say, all right, one week after the deadline as well to help troubleshoot the, the, the comments from the reviewers. And then last semester, I told my thesis and dissertation consultant to um, close all the 60 minute appointments so that you have more time now for the 30 minute appointment because it's only formatting. You can deal with the students who are graduating, graduating the next semester working on the writing portion late, right? All hands on that, the couple of weeks before and the couple of weeks after. So we really, we, we really try not to cancel any graduation. If you're attempting to work on your documents, we tell the registrar, just hold off on the diploma, we are going to get them graduated. So even though we have that deadline, it's an internal deadline. We just scare them with it. We say, <laughs> as long as you keep working on it, and then and it's like, all right, you know, then we keep sending reminders to the last few. So that's how we do it. But the nice thing is that Kristen just got hired full time, and she runs three other, uh, two other programs. But now in her capacity as a reviewer, when she's not doing uh, peak time reviews, she can open up walk-ins all the time. So she actually has daily walk-in times like two hours a day and anybody can walk in. And then obviously when it comes to crunch time, when she's the reviewer, she closes all her walk-in. So I have to pull back all the other consultants on hand to focus on that. Thank you. How many students do you have graduated that year? Um, so like we put uh, in the slide, we review about 600 over 660 files per year. Is that like three times a year, once a year? Three times a year. The The highest is in spring and then followed by summer and then it, a little bit fewer in the fall. But fall is when we do more of the um, events. I mean, a actually events is every semester, but more students come to the events during the fall because they're preparing for the graduating year. So during the walk-in clinics, do you often find that students have basically the same questions that so you can they they do sometimes the questions come in the common questions are like too much white space what does that mean moving the moving one not allowing one uh, line reference on one page and two on the other those easy fixes we just send a link to the tutorials and see this this is how you do it right but the ones that walk in really have complications something weird with your file somehow I you know Whatever, like even in Overly, they will come in and usually that's because they have integrated so many packages that it is conflicting with the codes that we have prepared. So that's when our consultant has kind of like picked up skills along the way that they can kind of figure out what to do. And if they can't, then that's when they reach out to Overly and say, hey, help. We are, I think we're out of time. Yeah, yeah we got two minutes to go to the next Okay, time. sounds good. I am available in the foyer if you have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen.